Hey guys, Jake here. Just wanted to do another video on the Carl Boulder K1 head unit on this nice, chilling five degree Wisconsin morning. Um, I've had the head unit for approximately two or three months now, and in those two or three months, I found some pretty cool software features, and I've also been able to address some of the issues that I've had and a lot of the issues that other people have had um, that were brought to my attention in the comment section of my last video, as well as uh, my Instagram comment section. So we'll dive on in. All right, we are in the Jeep now, and let's go over some of the key points that I have I want to address after two and a half months of ownership with the Caro Border K1 and also address a lot of the questions that have been asked of me in the comments in the personal message area of my Instagram account. Um, the first one being is the Caro Border K1 waterproof slash heat proof. In other words, if you have the top off and it rains, will it be okay? And will direct sunlight beating on it all day ruin it? I honestly don't know yet. Um, it's it's winter here in Wisconsin and I don't drive my Jeep in winter, especially without the top on. Um, but without knowing if it's waterproof or not, I've taken some precaution on cleaning it. So the way that I clean the screen, because you do get fingerprints on it because it's the same screen as like you'd have on a cell phone, um, but you can't just you know go and wipe it off with your sleeve because it's so big. So I use a microfiber towel in Windex or glass cleaner, as well as a gooey rubbery um, sponge thing. I'll put both the microfiber towel that I use as well as uh, the goop sponge thing in the description. The goop sponge thing looks like this. And basically what I do with it is I just roll it between the buttons and into the cracks of the screen to get any dust or dirt that might get in there that you wouldn't be able to uh, you know, get with just a towel. So I'll have both those in the description, check them out. They work really well for me. Hopefully they work well for you. Um, the cleaning goop thing works really well for all of my, my controls and buttons and hard to re reach places that I normally couldn't get with, you know, a towel or a Q-tip. And we'll go on to the second uh, part or question now. So some of the settings within the Caro Border K1 you are unable to change, and I'll go into that more later. One of the questions I've been getting quite often is, how come my steering wheel controls have been changed or flipped? The biggest change that comes with the K1 is that the top button on the left so this button right here the top will now make your songs go backwards and the bottom will make your songs go forward now you cannot change that in the steering wheel control setting of this unit it is ingrained in there there is zero way to change it so the way that I have found and this was a tip sent to me by one of the Instagram users is that this can just pop out and you can flip it upside down. Now I already did it, but I'll show you how easy it is. You just get behind it and you just pull and they come out. So, and then you can, you know, flip it, pop it back in, but then you can make them, there, just pop it right back in. Then you can make it uh, change the songs with the top being forward and the bottom now going backwards. It's awesome. That is a great, great tip. It sucks that you have to do it, but um, in the end it's, it's worth it. So let's go on to point number three. Right, so the next thing is going over how to use the maps on here. Now, in order to use maps with the K1, you need to have internet service. So whether that is a hotspot on your cell phone or play, pay for an entirely new, you know, SIM card so you can have internet in here. And there are SIM ports for the K1, however, it includes a 4G module and a GPS module that I took the time to run through the uh, pillar here, clean and out of the way, but I don't have internet, so the maps do not work. So what you're gonna wanna do is go, or to get them to work without internet, is to go into the setup area and make sure while you're at your house, you're connected to internet. So I'll come in here. Yes, I'm, I'm connected to internet. Now what I'm gonna do is go into the navigation tab. And within navigation, do, 
do I can download maps so in order to download the maps you would click on your icon so my icon is Jacob so we're going to here and from there you go into offline maps hopefully that picks up on it and you can select your own map so I can download what area I wish to download I can download quite a bit so once I download this whole area of the maps hit download I will be able to route wherever I need to go and you can download multiple maps um, so if you're going on a long road trip and you don't want to use up your phone's data or hotspot or pay for another um, sim card you can just download segments of the map and as you near the end you can just launch the next one and that's the best way I have found to get around um, the internet issue um, with the K1. Eventually, yeah, I, I might run a hotspot or I might get a, another SIM card if I can find a good deal, but I have unlimited data on my phone. I just don't have hotspots, so I just use the Apple Maps. Um, so the next uh, setting that I want to go over that everyone I think would or will benefit from is the quick wake up that this unit has. So as it is, it takes, like I said in the last video, anywhere between 20 and 30 seconds for the unit to fully boot up. Now, when you just want to get in your car, go, have the music blasting, everything functioning, it can get a little annoying having to wait that long for everything to be fully functional. However, you can put it into sleep mode. So if you drive your Jeep every day, like I, I do over the summer, you're going to want to do this. You go into the setup, and in setup, you're going to go into car infotainment. Once you're in car infotainment, you're going to click on the common tab, and you're going to turn on sleep mode. Now with sleep mode, every time you turn off your car, as soon as you turn the key forward, it's going to bring you right to your home screen and everything's going to be functioning fine. Um, it loads in probably f less than five seconds, so that is a huge uh, feature that's built into this. Okay, so the next portion is going to be going into more software questions and uh, software features that are packed onto this device. Like most Android devices, they will share some of the similar features. So like I said, there, there are some things that cannot be changed. This launcher, the whole Carabotor K1 launcher, you can't change anything on it. However, you can change some of these buttons around and what they do. And I'll explain how to do that in a second. First question I've been getting, how do I get Sirius XM radio onto the Carabotor K1 head unit? Well, the first way to do it is to go into, you have to make an account first. Most people do have an account already, but you wanna go into the uh, Google Play Store. Go into the Google Play Store and you can simply search uh, I already searched it once, Sirius XM. And then you can just hit install and you'll have Sirius XM built into um, the apps section of this head unit. Now, the second way, which is the way that I would use to get Sirius XM, is just through CarPlay. So you can go into um, CarPlay, I'm just gonna use Wired for now. Um, but within CarPlay, once you have it downloaded onto your phone or Android device, you'll have Sirius XM. The other app that I took the time to download, which is probably gonna be my favorite app, is this right here, Gaia GPS. This has a bunch of off-grid off uh, 4x4 trails and maps on it, and it runs just off of uh, like Apple Maps. And the cool thing is, is once you find maps, so you here you can see there's the red are some hiking trails uh, near my house but when you get into places you know that offer more off-grid uh, type of wheeling um, it has a lot of those maps already installed onto it so that is a huge plus that I can access it from my head unit and I no longer will have to have you know the head unit plus my cell phone plus an iPad doing everything that this thing can do on its own just so we'll go into the last two settings um, on this head unit that I think everyone should kind of be aware of. Like I said at the beginning of this video, the K1 head unit is an Android 
based unit. However, it's so much more capable than they advertised it to be. That being said, when you are in um, the settings and you go into car infotainment and you go to the about device, this is where I showed you in the last video where you type in the code 8878 and you hit okay. And playing with this and watching other people play with this head unit, there is so much going on in here that you can change and activate. So yes, it has RCA ports. You can run a full-blown um, custom system on it. I wasn't aware on how to exactly do that, but in speaking with others, I've learned how. Um, however, the cameras that this thing offers, it can run a full 360 camera, as you see right here. Oops. Um, so, you can have a front camera going, you can have a rear camera going, you can have everything running on this head unit. Uh, it's, it's actually insane to me how much this thing can do. Um, now, the things that it can't do, I know I sound like a broken record here, are change this screen. There's no way that I have found yet to change this screen. So to get around this, I've downloaded from yet another person who suggested I do this, another launcher. And that launcher is called Agma. And here it is. So this is Agma. Now, I'll go into this in a second. First, I want to show you how to download it. So you're going to go into Car Apps. From Car Apps, you'll go over to Google Play Store. And in the Play Store, you will simply type in, let's get rid of that, Agma. Right there, A-G-A-M-A. -A. Once you download this launcher, you can change it to be used in any of these buttons. So when my car turns on, it is still going to this uh, Car Boulder K1 launcher. However, I spend most of my time in CarPlay, I am starting to utilize the Agma launcher. Now this is fully customizable, you can change everything on it. It's awesome. And you can get to stuff somewhat faster as well. So it obviously has the weather, negative three. I don't know if it's quite negative three. Maybe it is. I'm going to say it's more around two. Anyways, um, you can access everything. You can throw your music into there. Boom. All my music settings pop right up. And there's auto link. I can access my navigation. I can add all my different maps in here. I haven't taken the time to do that yet. Radio, I can add all my presets. Oh my goodness, I gotta turn that off. Um, anyways, press this button, boom, Agma comes up. So no need for two maps anymore. So, a lot of really cool features that you can, you know, do with this head unit. There's a lot of stuff that I'm learning that you can change. Um, this you can change to pretty much anything. You can change all the colors, you can change all the features, um, and you can change all these widgets. You can download this onto any Android unit. This is not specific to just the K1, um, but it's kind of cool that I can have it. You know, the, the red kind of matches a little bit more of the theme of my, my Jeep. Um, and it's cool that I don't have to, you know, just be, just have one launcher. Now, yes, I could make it so as soon as I turn on my car, this is what pops up. Um, I didn't do that, but maybe I will in the future. The future, but hopefully this helps you guys. And I've answered a few of the questions that y'all had. Um, let me know in the comments if you want to see anything else, or if I can address anything else for you guys. All right, take care.